Family Legends For most of my life, I've had the certain knowledge that I would die at the talons and teeth of a large cat. It's strange to think, I know. And I was successful to not share this with anyone for more than 30 years. But it finally leaked out at some family meeting or another. Of course, our family support for one another is legendary. It took a full 15 minutes for the laughter to die down. There was another personal sharing that was similar. I had often had at least one night class that required a 10 o'clock p.m. night commute back to my home. A full 30 minutes of driving a windy country road next to a reservoir with nothing but the moon, the stars, and my headlights. As I was nearing the end of the country stretch, just before the homes of the next village, something darted from the bushes on my left and disappeared in front of my hood, then reappeared safely while entering the bushes on my right. Now, when I say something, I don't mean a squirrel. It was much larger. It wasn't a fox. It was larger than that. But it wasn't a deer. It was a tad smaller than that. The most curious thing was that it was running on two feet. Also, bent over due to the speed of movement. Oh yes, it was wearing a tuxedo with tails flapping in the wind. So you can see my problem. I was certain of what I saw and certain I could never ever tell anyone about it. I mean, given the choice, either I saw a little leprechaun man in a tuxedo or I was hallucinating due to bad taco. Well, I chose the taco and kept quiet. For the rest of the week, I kept quiet, and I kept it away from the tacos. Each day I passed the stretch with watchful eyes, and it became apparent that my little man liked the night for his speedy walks. Well, the next Monday night brought me to the very same spot at nearly the same hour, and nothing happened. I passed the gully with some relief and began climbing the small hill, entering the village, and suddenly from the left the little man stuck his head out of the bushes, fled even closer in front of my headlights, and this time I barely caught a glimpse of his tuxedo tails as they disappeared into the bushes on my right. I hit my brakes this time, sliding to a stop. I got out and spent a good ten minutes peering and listening near the bushes. Nothing. Partly through fear and mostly through exhaustion, I made it back to my vehicle and drove the next 20 minutes to my house. Going over the reality of my experience, I felt it was time to tell my wife that what I saw, no matter how odd it sounded. Hmm, something happened tonight. I, I saw something on the road, and it's funny, but I saw the same thing last week. It was a little... So I went on to explain, and... This is where my memory fails me. Either her laughter woke up the kids or she went door to door bringing them out or perhaps she waited until the next family dinner anyway. In any case, the little man in a tuxedo ended, entered the family history book. The next week, the little man failed the show. In fact, for nearly three years, the little man had other places to be, other roads to run down. Until one fall, late in the afternoon, but still well lit, there he was, calmly standing by the side of the road, but in this case, he took his own sweet time crossing, a bit arrogantly looking at my vehicle as, as if I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He must have taken a full minute to go from the left to the right, and me honking my horn did not faze him in the least. It was the most arrogant Tom Turkey I had ever seen. And then I realized this is what I saw all those years ago. Turkeys were not so common back then. In fact, they haven't moved west or north or wherever they come from. We, we didn't have turkeys. And when I saw my first one late at night, I had no reference point. I barely saw what I saw. Two legs, running fast, black tuxedo with tails. Ha! <laughs> Mystery solved. Three years later, I'd seen a number of turkeys come into the neighborhood. They flew into my oak tree one morning, and the whole family came out to take pictures. I never realized that perhaps I'd seen the very first immigrant turkey on that dark road. So I drove home, excited to be able to explain what I now knew to be the truth. 
The family was all there, and I recounted what I experienced back three years ago in the revelation of my encounter with the turkey on the road. And there was a moment of wide-eyed silence. And then there was laughter. They are still laughing.